So basically, you are forecasting your future balance sheet. You are forecasting your future statement of financial position. That is about financing. On with this SWOT analysis, or some would call this one as the TOS analysis. So this is again game of quadrants. Folk, money, capital, labor, everything. All as said, given all the stuff for managers to run the business and to make the profits. Financial. That is why you call it the balance scorecard. It strikes a perfect balance between the financial perspective and the non-financial perspective. My advice for y'all, it's not hard. It's a kind of a challenging subject. Okay? So what you need to do is, you need to focus on the key areas. So key areas, your examiner will test. Clear? So you don't need to go through in and out. So you need to figure out what topics are more important and give more weightage to those topics. Clear? That's represent investments, future projects. So we need to learn what are the ways that we evaluate those future projects. We, we need to learn some basic understanding of NPV, IRR, ARR, those type of things. Clear? And probably we might need to learn some amalgamation, acquisition, those type of topics in long-term investment path. Clear? Now, so once you figure out your investment project, you need to finance. We cannot say liability in finance, we call debt. Mainly we're focusing on long-term debt. So the cost of debt. So we've learned some tax implications as well. Or you combine the, we call weighted average cost of capital. Combination of these together. In the internal environment, the favorable concerns for you would be identified as strengths for you. So what do you mean by your strength? These are the key forces for you, the key advantages which can drive and competitive edge in the market. But And these are internal for you. So these are the strengths. And the opposite, hard opposite of this is weaknesses. So what do you mean by a weakness is these are the internal forces but which are adverse to you. Or the negatives, the drawbacks, the loopholes you have market. Through penetrating the market, you are going to achieve the growth. And all these big companies in the nowadays context they do it. Threats of new entrants. So what do you mean by Michael Port identified that? When there is ability for any business to enter into the existing industry or its market, there would be high competition. So we know when you do product for the existing market, that is what that is called the product development. Product development. are much interested in investing in your company again the growth is accelerating the growth is accelerating act for the best interest of the principals principal appoints the agent principal appoints the agent to act for the best a person started a business, he operated it, he managed it, he enjoyed all the profits. Right? With that concept. If you look at a player like Apple, they have always been proactive. This example of the strategic management accounting where they always did a lot of market research lot of research investment into how to come up with the best technology 
provide the best smartphone out there. One of the highly tested areas in your nation. Conventional management accounting is, of course, the name itself gives you the idea. It is history. And the strategic management accounting is very well prospect. And the second one, single entity and relative. So, conventional management accounting, you all 